Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to graph y equals secant of x minus pi halves. And to graph this, what we're basically want, going to want to do is graph the reciprocal function, which would be y equals cosine of x minus pi halves. And then use that reciprocal function to be able to apply um, what is going, how to graph secant of x minus uh, pi over half. So the first important thing that I think we want to look at is what exactly are the or you know what exactly are our points? So we're going to graph y equals cosine of x minus pi halves. And to graph any of our um, trigonometric functions, we need to be able to find the basic information. So let's go through all the basic information. First thing we want to do is determine the amplitude, which is the absolute value of a. Next thing we want to do is determine the period, which is um, two pi divided by b. The next thing we want to do is determine the x scale, which is period, divided by 4. Um, vertical shift, which is equal to d. And horizontal shift, which is equal to bx minus c. And you might say, whoa, where did all this information come from? Well, let me actually write this over here. So to determine all this information, we have a general rule for all of our trigonometric functions. And I'll write it in for cosine. y equals, I'm sorry a times cosine of bx minus c plus d. Whoosh. OK, so that's where my a, b, and c came from for me to figure out all this information. So before I even start graphing, I want to make sure I can figure out all this information for cosine. We'll get to secant in a second. Um, the amplitude for cosine, you can see in this equation, is just going to be the absolute value of 1, which is equal to 1. Period is going to be 2 pi divided by b. b in this case is 1, so that's just equal to 2 pi. The x scale is going to be my period, 2 pi divided by 4, which is equal to pi halves. Um, my vertical shift, um, you can see, am I adding or subtracting outside my parentheses? No, so that's none. And my horizontal shift, all you do is you take whatever is inside your parentheses and set it equal to 0, right? Bx minus 0, I'm sorry, equals 0. So you're going to want to set that equal to 0. So I take x minus pi halves equal to 0, and x equals pi halves. Now, the horizontal shift, when we're graphing, you know, because um, the, these graphs go on and on forever in both directions, right? But we kind of want need a, a place to start. So I always like to start at my horizontal shift. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is I am actually going to graph what exactly cotangent looks like, what we call the initial period. Um, so let's just graph what is cosine of the function x without minus pi over h because, or pi halves. Because you have to understand the parent graphs. And I'm just going to graph the initial period. Again, this graph is going to continue indefinitely to the right and definitely to the left. But the initial period has an amplitude of 1. And it has a period of 2 pi. So 2 pi pi, pi halves, and this would be 3 pi over 2. And the initial period starts at its maximum, goes to its intercept, goes to its minimum, intercept, and then back up to the maximum. So when I start my graph, I'm going to start it just like this one, but I'm going to start it at its new um, horizontal shift, which would be the starting point. So now when I'm graphing this, I'm going to graph two periods to the right. I am going to say that. Uh, we don't know where um, we don't know we don't know where the y axis y axis is still over there. But I'm going to say this initial term is pi halves. Okay, I'm not always going to start at zero. I'm going to say all right, initial term is pi halves. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to create a scale. We know the period is two pi. Um, we're starting at pi halves, and the x scale is pi is pi halves. That means, remember, there's x scale. We divide by four, so there's four important points from here. We start here to get to your end period. There's there's the intercept, minimum, intercept, maximum. So I'm just going to go intercept, minimum, intercept, maximum. So now, to get to my next point, the, the reason why we have the x scale is that is the distance between each one of those important points. So if that's pi halves, this is going to be pi, because pi halves plus pi halves equals pi. This would be 3 pi halves. This would be 2 pi. And this would be? 5 pi halves. Now, that is going to complete one period. All right? But we always usually want to do complete two periods. So I'm just going to keep on adding. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Remember, there's four, um, 
four important points within the uh, period of our cosine. And so that would be 3 pi, 7 pi over 2, 4 pi, 9 pi over 2. OK, so now all we're simply going to do is we're going to replicate. And I'm going to draw you know, a little line here. So we can at least see where exactly the, uh, um, the amplitude is, which is 1. Now let's do it a little bit lower. We'll say that's 1 and that's negative 1. Now again, we're graphing cosine, not actually what we need to graph. So I'm going to use little dotted lines to represent the graph. So I'm going to replicate just like the parent graph. But now I'm going to go through my new coordinate points here. So I'm going to start at 1, go to my intercept, minimum, intercept, maximum. Then I'm just going to follow that pattern one more time. OK, so now I have graphed what cosine looks like, right? Got to know what cosine, but now rather than it starting at 0 like the initial period, it starts at pi halves. So now what we need to do is determine, well, how is the secant then related to the cosine? Why did we graph that secant function? The reason why we did that is because the values where our cosine function is equal to 0, secant is undefined. Therefore, each one of these x-intercepts, we have an asymptote. So I'm going to go to every x-intercept, and I'm going to apply an asymptote. Then when you look at uh, the unit circle, when we evaluate points, one thing we also noticed is it's secant is undefined when, um, when the values of cosine is 0. But they share, actually, the same maximum minimum points. So for every one of these maximum minimum points on cosine, I'm actually going to graph in the opposite direction little parabola-shaped curves that approach the asymptotes, right? Because remember, we have asymptotes. That means the graph is going to approach them. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. In the red is your y equals the secant of x minus pi halves. Thanks.